Welcome to the world of sumo wrestling. From the outside, people who aren't familiar with this sport, sumo might seem a bit unusual. Big hulking men who are semi-naked trying to push each other off of a ring. Though this is partly true, sumo wrestling is a sport which is rich in history. Considered as the national sport of Japan, this traditional wrestling is full of interesting rules and rituals. If you aren't sold yet, here are 12 things that you didn't know about sumo fighters. Before we get started, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell for more such amazing content. Let's get started. Number 12. Special Diet Judging from their sheer size, most would assume that they eat a lot of fast food and snacks, but that isn't the case at all. Just like everything else in this sport, even eating is highly regimented and strict. They don't need to shovel down burgers and shakes, rather they eat something quite simple. This interesting stew of fish balls, meat and veggies in a pot of chicken or soy broth is called chunkanabi. They also eat crushed rice pies, which are calorie dense. The Rikishi trains and lives by this diet. You might be wondering, how do they grow so huge on such a basic diet? Well, the secret is that they eat often and according to a fixed schedule. On an average, most wrestlers reach up to a weight of 150 to 160 kilos, but there are exceptions, of course. Number 11. Slender Rikishi While it is a common perception that sumo wrestlers are always bulky and huge, this wasn't always the case. In fact, wrestlers from the 19th century are often muscular and very much slender. This pattern of slender rikishis can even be seen in the beginning of the 20th century as well. Even modern-day sumo has similar lighter-framed wrestlers, like the famed Chionofuji Mitsugu, a yokozuna who won the Emperor's Cup 31 times. He was also the first wrestler to have more than a thousand wins throughout his career. He achieved all this at a modest weight of 120 kilos. Another lightweight legend in this world is the legendary Pavel Bojar from the Czech Republic who reached the top division while weighing only 90 kilos. So, size isn't the only thing that gets you wins in the sumo world. Skills and dedication also help. Number 10. Sumo Wrestlers and Girls Sumo isn't a recent sport in the history of Japan. In fact, the mention of sumo in manuscripts dates back to 721 AD. So you can imagine how this sport is very much ingrained in Japanese culture. It's not merely a sport, it's an age-old tradition. Due to sumo wrestling's immense popularity, the rikishi, the wrestlers, are very popular with the women. The huge size and stature are considered attractive in this part of the world. You don't even have to be the best of the best. Even the low-division sumo wrestlers are well-loved by the ladies. One possible explanation could be that since sumo is considered as a sport created by the gods, they see the wrestlers with reverence. So those of you who may want to be sumo wrestlers, maybe this might be the reason to push you further. Good luck! Number 9. Rituals in the Ring Sumo wrestling is a very ritualistic sport. Just because the ring is set doesn't mean that the rikishis will be at each other's throat from the start. There is a whole lot of preparation and ritual that comes before the fight. It starts with bowing to each other. The wrestlers then move to the corners and stamp their feet. They believe that stamping the feet on the ground will squash evil spirits. They also receive a special water called Chikara Mizu and paper. They use the water to rinse their mouths, which is a similar ritual practice before entering a Shinto shrine. The paper is then used to wipe the lips dry. You'll also see a lot of squatting and strange hand-waving going on, which is meant to show that they're not armed or hiding any weapons. They also perform some warm-up strength exercises called Chico. Both the wrestlers throw salt in the air, since salt is believed to have purifying powers. And finally, the fight begins. Number 8. Prizes for the Champions The champions in this sport are rewarded well. Though winning the title is a huge honor in itself, and raising the Emperor's Cup on the Dohyo is probably a dream come true, the champions walk out of here with a lot of goodies as well. For starters, the tournament awards winners from various categories with a trophy, a prestigious plaque, and about 19,000 US dollars. But it doesn't end there. Once they achieve the champion status, various organizations from around Japan and abroad will shower them with different gifts and congratulatory presents. Not bad at all. Number 7. Ranking System The sport of sumo is built on a hierarchy. It's kind of like a company, and you rise up the ranks by proving yourself by winning matches. This pyramid is built on around 550 wrestlers 
who are further divided into six divisions. The highest of them all is called the Makuchi rank and features 42 of the best up-and-coming Rikishis. The second highest is the Juryo rank, which has 28 wrestlers. The lowest in the pyramid is called the Jonokuchi rank and they are the greens in the sumo world. Members of the Makuchi and Juryo level can recruit servants from these lower divisions and they essentially become their personal helpers, carrying their belongings, drying them off with a towel and other menial tasks. Sounds tough being a novice sumo wrestler. Number 6. The Highest Rank Since hierarchy is a major part of this sport, reaching the top is a Rikishi's main goal. To achieve the Grand Champion title, or also called the Yokozuna, is no easy task. How does one achieve it, you ask? Well, the Rikishi will have to clear all six divisions in the hierarchy and reach the highest one and win two major tournaments back to back. This might sound easy enough when you put it like that, but to put things into perspective, since the 1700s there have only been 72 Yokozunas. These grand champions are considered as the living embodiment of sumo and are well respected in the society. Another thing, you can't demote a Yokozuna. He has the power to continue fighting till he is no longer able to. Retirement is in his hands. Number 5. The Heaviest Sumo Wrestlers Jumping from the smallest to the largest, there are a few wrestlers who are huge even compared to sumo standards. Meet Konoshiki, a former American sumo wrestler who was, at the time, the heaviest wrestler ever in sumo history, which earned him the nicknames Dump Truck and Meat Bomb. He weighed between 280 and 300 kilos and was a force to be reckoned with. After his career in the sumo world, he went on to business ventures. He was also lucky enough to make a cameo appearance in the Fast and Furious 3 movie. A close second to Konoshiki in terms of weight is Yamamoto Yama Ryuta, or simply called Yama, who weighed about 233 kilograms when he was just 22 years old. At his peak, he reached 265 kilograms, earning him the title of the heaviest Japanese-born sumo wrestler in history. Some consider him to be the heaviest Japanese person ever, and that's probably true. Number 4. Special Clothes Everything is traditional and decided in the world of sumo wrestling. This can also be seen in the way a rikishi dresses up. Even for everyday wear, the wrestlers are expected to strictly follow their dressing code based on their ranking. If you were to see a rikishi on the street and can hear wooden sandals hit in the ground, he's probably a lower-ranking fighter. On the other hand, if you see a wrestler who wears sandals with split-toe socks, he's probably from the higher divisions. You also generally see a posse of low-ranking fighters around him who are essentially there to aid him with anything. But the most important distinction in clothing is their outerwear. As cruel as it may sound, lower division wrestlers are not permitted to wear coats and scarves even in the dead of winter. They can only wear a light kimono and are expected to bear the cold. Number 3. Traditional Hairstyle Styling of hair is also a serious business for sumo wrestlers. They uniformly wear the same hairstyle out of tradition. The Chon Mage hairstyle is most commonly associated with the Edo period and samurais, but the same can be seen on sumo fighters as a tribute to the past. You can't get this hairstyle just anywhere. Only 55 hairdressers authorized by Sumo Association are allowed to do it. A rikishi's long hair is combed using four handcrafted boxwood combs, which are styled with a special stick. These are tied with a wax paper rope and finally fixed with a chamomile wax pomade. It's an intensive process, as you can see here. Number 2. Driving Ban Another unexpected fact about sumo wrestlers is that they are banned from driving a car. It's considered that a man of their size poses a serious danger to himself and others around him while on the road. An incident involving a sumo wrestler, Mitoizumi Masuyuki, made this danger clear when he got into a road accident. Those who break this rule will face serious punishment and can be forced to retire, like Osuna Arashi, who met with a traffic accident in 2018. No rikishi, high or low ranking, are allowed to drive. There is no exception to this rule. Number 1. Armed Judges The traditions also apply to the referees of this sport. The gyoji, as they are called in the sumo world, often wear beautiful dresses, which is a stark contrast to a rikishi's basic attire. A gyoji's uniform signifies his title. This uniform varies based on their rank. 
Lower Gyorgi will wear a simple cotton robe and walk barefoot. The higher ranked Gyorgis wear lavish colored silk robes. To make things even more interesting, the high ranking Gyorgis carry a weapon on their person. This symbolizes the judge's impartiality. Boy, that doesn't sound easy at all. Do you think you could ever live the sumo life? Comment and let us know. If you enjoy our content, be sure to smash the like button, share and subscribe, and we'll be back with more. Until next time, see ya!